is the hole in the ozone layer causing frog species extinctions? Biologists have known for a long time that frogs are very vulnerable to changes in their environment. Frogs across the globe were being found with deformities. Such as extra legs, and species were going extinct. By the mid-1990s, it was still being speculated that the cause of the mutations was the weakened ozone layer. Which was allowing too much ultraviolet radiation to filter onto the planet. Today, however, most scientists believe that the culprit is fertilizers leaking into the lakes and rivers where frogs live. The fertilizers cause certain types of snail species to thrive, and these snails often host parasites. The parasites, in turn, infect frogs when they are still in their tadpole stage. Cysts form on the tadpoles, which creates the mutations that are being observed. Besides the malformations seen in frogs, there is another, even more troubling concern. Many species of frogs some estimate about 100 species are vulnerable are threatened with extinction, and many others have already disappeared. In this case, the culprit is global warming. Because frogs have thin skin, they are vulnerable to environmental changes. Increased temperatures have caused fungi some scientists specifically blame the chytrid fungus to infect frog skin. And this leads to the lethal disease Patricocathrium dendrobotidis, BD. The good news is that it is easy to treat and cure frogs, the bad news is that even if they are treated, once released back into the wild they are likely to be reinfected. To help arrest the extinction rate. Zoos around the world have been rescuing sample populations and breeding them in captivity. Why is there a hole in the ozone layer? The ozone layer is not evenly distributed around the planet. It is thicker around the equator and nearby latitudes and thinner as one progresses north and south. This is true of the Earth's atmosphere in general because the planet's spin causes the planet to bulge slightly around the middle. The gravitational pull is consequently a little weaker and the atmosphere thickens. At the poles, the atmosphere is thinner, including the ozone layer. In addition, because ozone is dependent upon the interaction of sunlight and oxygen, there is naturally less ozone at the poles, furthermore. Ozone layers fluctuate naturally over time due to numerous factors affecting climate and sunlight levels. Since 1975, scientists believe that more than 33% of the ozone layer has disappeared. There is a seasonal factor to the reduction in ozone at any given time during the year, too. At different times, the ozone layer naturally declines or rises. But scientists also know that chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which are used for air conditioning. Aerosol sprays, and halon in fire extinguishers, along with methane. CH4, and nitrous oxide, NO2, are broken down by UV radiation, freeing carbon. 
chlorine, and nitrogen atoms that then react with ozone molecules and destroy them. CFCs are particularly bad because they last so long in the atmosphere. One CFC molecule can destroy 100,000 molecules of ozone. What is an aneroid barometer? The word aneroid means without fluid, and so aneroid barometers do not need mercury in order to work. French inventor Lucien Vitti, 1805-1866, built upon a concept first proposed by German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz, 1646-1716. In which a metallic capsule surrounded by a vacuum could be used to measure air pressure. Using very thin pieces of metal, Vitti managed to connect such a capsule to highly sensitive dials displayed behind glass within an encasement. This was highly detailed work on the level of the finest clock craftsmanship. Aneroid barometers were very difficult to make in Vitti's time. But high-tech instruments are produced today using such devices as electron beams welding copper beryllium alloys. Because aneroid barometers are made of metal. They are also sensitive to changes in temperature and altitude. Bimetallic strips can be used to compensate for temperature, but altitude poses more of a problem. For this reason, aneroid barometers work best at elevations below 3,000 feet. About 915 meters, but they can be calibrated for higher altitudes if needed. How do you convert inches of mercury to millibars? When measuring air pressure, sometimes inches of mercury are used, and sometimes millibars. To convert inches of mercury to millibars, multiply the number of inches by 33.8637526 or 33.86 will give you an accurate enough measurement to do the calculation in reverse multiply millibars by 0.0295301 or 0.03 for an estimate to give you inches of mercury What are the most extreme barometer readings ever measured? On December 29, 2004, a barometer reading of 32.25 inches of mercury was taken at Tonsant Sengel. Mongolia a world record. At the other extreme. A reading of 25.63 inches was recorded on October 12, 1979, in the Philippines within the eye of Typhoon Tip. Has there always been an ozone layer? No. Before plants evolved on the planet, there was no ozone layer. Because plants are responsible for converting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere into oxygen molecules. So, 
life on Earth actually began to evolve before there was an ozone layer. What is a dry front? A dry front also called a dry line or dew point front is a border line. Separating a mass of dry air from one of much more humid air. Often found east of the Rocky Mountains, these fronts will find the warmer. Drier air lifting the cooler, more humid air ahead of it in the higher altitudes. While humid air near the ground is denser than the dry air and the drier air will flow over it. The result is an air mass reversal that can precipitate the formation of cumulonimbus clouds. Thunderstorms, and, quite often, tornadoes. What is precession? Precession is a phenomenon that results from the planet's changing tilt. You can think of it as a kind of wobbling effect. About 12,900 years from now. The North Pole will be tilted toward the Sun in January and away from it in June. This means that the winter season in the North will occur during the months that are now considered summer. Late June through early September, and summer will occur from January through March. This change will be gradual over time, and no one alive today or for many generations will be aware of it. How was the ozone hole discovered? The famous meteorologist Gordon Miller born Dobson 1889-1976 was the first to make accurate measurements of the ozone in the 1920s. But it wasn't until 1979 that the depletion of the ozone was observed at the South Pole by the Nimbus 7 satellite. Today, a network of Dobson spectrophotometers have been set up around the world to monitor changes in the ozone. What is the difference between the ecliptic plane and Earth's equatorial plane? The equatorial plane is the plane of Earth's equator extended indefinitely out into space. It turns out that Earth's rotation around its axis is not lined up with the ecliptic plane. Instead, Earth is tilted about 23.5 degrees. This tilt is the main cause of the seasons on Earth. Who was Cleveland Abbey? Also famous as the person who proposed the creation of time zones, Cleveland Abbey. 1838-1916, was an American meteorologist and founder of the Weather Bulletin. EST 1869, the first daily periodical to include weather forecasts. He also established the National Weather Bureau in 1870, which is now the National Weather Service.
What is a hectopascal? A hectopascal, HBA, is the same thing as a millibar. Some meteorologists, especially outside the United States, use hectopascals instead of millibars or inches of mercury because the HBA is the International System of Units, SI, standard. Who discovered the ozone layer? In 1913, French physicists Henri Buisson (1873–1944) and Charles Fabry (1867–1945) (full name: Marie Paul Auguste Charles Fabry) theorized that an ozone layer existed in the upper atmosphere. It was confirmed in a series of measurements of ultraviolet radiation. Levels that were recorded by W. N. Hartley and A. Cornu from 1879 to 1881. Is the Earth's rotation slowing down? Yes. About 400 million years ago, there were 400 days a year, versus the present day 365. Eventually. If the Sun doesn't die first, the Earth will stop rotating completely. Who was that? Dutch chemist Martinus van Merum, 1750-1837, discovered ozone around the year 1785. While conducting experiments with electricity. As many high school science students now do. Van Merum smelled a distinctive odor while working with oxygen and electricity. Van Merum, who is also credited with discovering carbon monoxide, did not, however, identify the source of the odor as a unique gas molecule. It was not until 1840 that German-Swiss chemist Christian Friedrich Schönbein, 1799-1868, correctly identified ozone as a gas, which he named after the Greek ozean, meaning smell. Finally. Swiss chemist J. L. Sarit worked out its chemical structure as being a molecule consisting of three bonded oxygen atoms, O3. What is the ecliptic plane? The ecliptic plane is the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. Ancient astronomers were able to trace the ecliptic as a line across the sky. Even though they did not know Earth actually orbited the Sun. They merely followed the position of the Sun compared to the position of the stars in the sky, figured out. Despite the Sun drowning out the light of the other stars, where the sun was every day. And noticed that every 365 days or so the positions would overlap and start going over the same locations again. That line marked a loop around the celestial sphere. 
astronomers marked the line using 12 zodiac constellations positioned near and through the loop. When do the seasons start and end? When it comes to climate and weather. The seasons start at different times of year depending on where one is on Earth. Astronomically speaking, though, the first day of spring happens on the vernal equinox. The first day of summer happens on the summer solstice, the first day of fall happens on the autumnal equinox. And the first day of winter happens on the winter solstice. When it comes to official weather statistics, the seasons are considered to be as follows. Winter is December through February, spring is March through May. Summer is June through August, and fall is September through November. So, if you hear a report, for example, that last summer was the hottest on record. That means June 1st through August 31st, and not June 21st through September 21st, which is how it is marked on your typical calendar. Does the Earth's tilt ever change? Yes. Our planet actually wobbles a bit, like a spinning top running out of steam. Currently, the axial tilt of our planet is about 23.5 degrees. Which is somewhere in the middle of its total capable range of 22.1 to 24.5 degrees. The change in tilt occurs over a period of about 41,000 years. What is a banjo barometer? The banjo barometer is a barometer set into a banjo shaped case. It was developed by Robert Hooke, 1635 to 1703, and was a very popular design because the large dial was easy to read and was large enough so that you could get very detailed readings. Who was Alexander Buchan? The most prominent meteorologist of the 19th century, Scottish scientist Alexander Buchan. 1829 to 1907, is sometimes referred to as the father of meteorology. He is credited with making great advances in weather charts. Including his use of isobars to connect areas of equal pressure in lines that are now familiar to anyone who has seen a weather map. He also understood the importance of ocean and atmospheric circulation like no one else of his age. In his 1868 book, Handy Book of Meteorology, he made long range weather predictions the first person to do so in a printed publication. Among his most famous ideas was what are now called buck and spells. These are predictable blips abrupt changes in temperature in the usually smooth transition in weather between the seasons. For instance, 
he predicted that a cold buck and spell typically occurred the week before Valentine's Day. Buchan was wise enough, though, to know that such a rule could never be hard and fast. And admitted that his buck and spells allowed for some variations and sometimes never occur at all. Who first discussed the link between climate change and how gases in the atmosphere absorb heat? In 1884, American physicist and astronomer S. P. Langley, 1834-1906, was the first to publish a scientific paper on how gases in the atmosphere can absorb heat, which has an effect on the Earth's climate. What is a barometer? A barometer is a device that measures air pressure. A standard barometer consists of a glass tube filled with mercury, a liquid metal. That is inserted into a reservoir, which also contains mercury. When the surrounding air pressure exerts more weight on the reservoir than the mercury in the tube does. The mercury level rises, and vice versa. What is a digital barometer? A digital barometer is an aneroid barometer that works by running an electrical current between two strips of metal. The current measures the distance between these strips, which are affected by air pressure, and translates these into an electronic display. How does the motion of Earth around the Sun cause the seasons to occur? Some people mistakenly think that the seasons are caused by Earth. Being farther from the Sun in winter and closer to the Sun in summer. This is incorrect. Earth's elliptical orbit is close enough to a perfect circle that distance is not the reason. In fact, Earth is closest to the Sun in early January and farthest in early July. Which is exactly the opposite of our summer and winter seasons. The reason for the seasons has to do with the angle at which sunlight strikes any particular place on Earth at any given time of year. The angle changes throughout the year because the tilt of Earth's axis differs from the ecliptic. Since the Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees, the Sun's rays hit the northern and southern hemispheres unequally. When the Sun's rays hit one hemisphere directly, the other hemisphere receives diffused rays. The hemisphere that receives the direct rays of the sun experiences summer. The hemisphere that receives the diffused rays experiences winter. Thus, when it is summer in North America, it is winter in most of South America, and vice versa. What are some other effects of ultraviolet radiation?
small amounts of ultraviolet, UV. Radiation can actually be good for you because it aids in the production of vitamin D in the body. However, you only need about 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight exposure a day to get this benefit. Not getting enough sunlight leads to vitamin D depletion, which can lead to depression and other symptoms in humans and is. Indeed, a chronic problem in populations located in northern and extreme southern climates. Besides the risks of cancer especially melanoma overexposure to UV radiation. Can cause cataracts or inflammation of the cornea, snow blindness. If exposure is not too long, the eye can heal itself from this inflammation. But prolonged exposure could lead to permanent blindness, cancer of the eye is also a possibility. It is also believed that too much UV radiation weakens immune systems. Those studies are still being conducted to more fully understand this health risk. Interestingly, it has also been found that in areas where ozone levels are lower and more UV radiation penetrates to ground level. Certain construction materials such as wood and some plastics degrade at a higher rate than normal. High UV levels also, of course, affect plants and animals, though some are at a higher risk than others. Scientists have learned, for example, that soybean crops and some types of rice could die if the ozone were too severely depleted. Also, young pine tree needles are damaged by UV light. But mature needles, which have a waxy coating, are protected. In the oceans, some forms of plankton could die or be severely depleted if the ozone was not doing its job. The result would be a breakdown in ocean food chains that could be devastating. The effects on wild animals are not well known, though nocturnal animals would likely be unaffected. And many diurnal animals have fur or feathers that protect them from radiation. However, skin around the eyes and ears are often more exposed to the sunlight. And animals would be as susceptible to eye problems as much as humans. Why is there an ozone hole at the South Pole but there isn't one at the North Pole? The harmful chemicals that destroy the ozone layer have to be carried up into the stratosphere by clouds in order to react with ozone. The land mass at the South Pole, Antarctica, creates the necessary weather conditions for this to happen. While the North Pole is covered in water, causing winds in the upper atmosphere to blow away pollutants. The bad news is that some scientists fear that increasing levels of pollution may result in a hole in the ozone at the North Pole in about 20 years. Why is there an ozone hole at the South Pole but there isn't one at the North Pole? The harmful chemicals that destroy the ozone layer have to be carried up into the stratosphere by clouds in order to react with ozone. The land mass at the South Pole, Antarctica, creates the necessary weather conditions for this to happen. 
while the North Pole is covered in water, causing winds in the upper atmosphere to blow away pollutants. The bad news is that some scientists fear that increasing levels of pollution may result in a hole in the ozone at the North Pole in about 20 years. How big is the hole in the ozone? In 2007 the ozone hole was measured to be 9.3 million square miles, 24 million square kilometers, in size. But this was a smaller hole than the record, set in September 2006, when the ozone hole was a gaping 10.6 million square miles, 27.5 million square kilometers, in area. How big is the hole in the ozone? In 2007 the ozone hole was measured to be 9.3 million square miles, 24 million square kilometers, in size. But this was a smaller hole than the record, set in September 2006, when the ozone hole was a gaping 10.6 million square miles, 27.5 million square kilometers, in area. Can the ozone hole be healed? Yes. While the latest figures represent an increase in the ozone hole size over previous years. There is some good news, compared to the 1980s, the hole is expanding more slowly. If we continue to reduce pollutants, the expansion may eventually stop and be reversed. Scientists believe that, if this happens, it will take about 50 years for ozone levels to return to natural levels. Can the ozone hole be healed? Yes. While the latest figures represent an increase in the ozone hole size over previous years. There is some good news, compared to the 1980s, the hole is expanding more slowly. If we continue to reduce pollutants, the expansion may eventually stop and be reversed. Scientists believe that, if this happens. It will take about 50 years for ozone levels to return to natural levels. What is wind? Wind, simply put, is the movement of air in the atmosphere. Wind movement is caused by the fact that air will move from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. What is wind? Wind, simply put, is the movement of air in the atmosphere. 
wind movement is caused by the fact that air will move from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. When a weatherman says that the wind direction is westerly does that mean? The wind is coming from the west or that it is blowing towards the west. Wind directions expressed by meteorologists and the National Weather Service indicate which direction the wind is coming from rather than where it is blowing so. If an area is experiencing northwest winds, for example, it means that the wind is coming from the northwest and blowing toward the southeast. In other words, high pressure zones contain more densely packed molecules of various gases which tend to flow to areas where the air is less dense. This concept was first explained by the Greek philosopher Anaximander. C 610 B.C.E 546 BCE, who explained that wind was a natural phenomenon and not caused by the gods or by trees waving their leaves, as some people thought. When a weatherman says that the wind direction is westerly does that mean? The wind is coming from the west or that it is blowing towards the west. Wind directions expressed by meteorologists and the National Weather Service indicate which direction the wind is coming from rather than where it is blowing so. If an area is experiencing northwest winds, for example, it means that the wind is coming from the northwest and blowing toward the southeast. In other words, high pressure zones contain more densely packed molecules of various gases which tend to flow to areas where the air is less dense. This concept was first explained by the Greek philosopher Anaximander. C 610 B.C.E 546 BCE, who explained that wind was a natural phenomenon and not caused by the gods or by trees waving their leaves, as some people thought. Does wind have a lot of energy that could help reduce the need for fossil fuels? If people could harvest all the energy in the Earth's wind through the use of windmills. For instance, it would generate about 3.6 million kilowatts of power. Enough to supply the energy needs of 3.6 billion Americans. Since Americans use much more energy than most people on the planet. It is safe to say that the energy needs of the nearly 7 billion people on Earth could be met by wind power alone. Unfortunately, it would be impossible to extract all of this energy. Wind turbines have become economically feasible. But we could never place them over every land and sea surface on the planet. Does wind have a lot of energy that could help reduce the need for fossil fuels? If people could harvest all the energy in the Earth's wind through the use of windmills. For instance, 
it would generate about 3.6 million kilowatts of power. Enough to supply the energy needs of 3.6 billion Americans. Since Americans use much more energy than most people on the planet. It is safe to say that the energy needs of the nearly 7 billion people on Earth could be met by wind power alone. Unfortunately, it would be impossible to extract all of this energy. Wind turbines have become economically feasible. But we could never place them over every land and sea surface on the planet. What does it mean when we say something is on the lee side of the wind? If a person is standing on the lee side of something, say, a building or rocky prominence, then he or she is protected from the wind because that obstacle is between him or her and the oncoming wind. What does it mean when we say something is on the lee side of the wind? If a person is standing on the lee side of something, say, a building or rocky prominence, then he or she is protected from the wind because that obstacle is between him or her and the oncoming wind. What are lee troughs and lee depressions? A lee trough also known as a dynamic trough is a low-pressure zone that forms downwind from a north-south mountain range. A lee depression is essentially the same thing, except that troughs are long and stretched out. While depressions are well-defined, localized areas of low-pressure What are lee troughs and lee depressions? A lee trough also known as a dynamic trough is a low pressure zone that forms downwind from a north-south mountain range. A lee depression is essentially the same thing, except that troughs are long and stretched out. While depressions are well defined, localized areas of low pressure. What is anemophobia? A fear of the wind and sometimes even mere drafts is known as anemophobia. What is anemophobia? A fear of the wind and sometimes even mere drafts is known as anemophobia. What is Bias Ballot's Law? Dutch meteorologist and chemist Christoph Hendrik died Eric Bies Ballad. 1817 to 1890, was a pioneer in meteorology, especially when it came to explaining how air flows in large weather. 
systems. The law that bears his name refers to the fact that when you stand with your back to the wind, the air pressure will be lower on your left than on your right in the northern hemisphere. And the opposite is true if you are standing in the southern hemisphere. This phenomenon which actually only proves to be true during well-organized weather. Systems was also discovered by American climatologist William Farrell, 1817-1891. Farrell actually formulated this theory a few months before Bayes' ballad. The Dutchman graciously acknowledged that the credit deserved to go to Farrell. But the law had already been denoted by his ballot's law, and the name stuck. Trade winds are very consistent winds blowing through the tropics, between 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north latitudes. At about 11 to 14 miles, 18 to 22 kilometers, per hour, sometimes for days on end. In the northern hemisphere they blow toward the equator from the northeast. And south of the equator they blow in from the southeast. While the term trade winds leads most people to think they got their names from the days when large sailing ships depended on them for shipping routes. The word trade actually has a German origin and means track or path. What is Bayes Ballot's Law? Dutch meteorologist and chemist Christoph Hendrik died Eric Bayes Ballot. 1817 to 1890, was a pioneer in meteorology, especially when it came to explaining how air flows in large weather. Systems. The law that bears his name refers to the fact that when you stand with your back to the wind, the air pressure will be lower on your left than on your right in the northern hemisphere. And the opposite is true if you are standing in the southern hemisphere. This phenomenon which actually only proves to be true during well-organized weather. Systems was also discovered by American climatologist William Farrell, 1817-1891. Farrell actually formulated this theory a few months before Bayes' ballot. The Dutchman graciously acknowledged that the credit deserved to go to Farrell. But the law had already been denoted by his ballot's law, and the name stuck. Trade winds are very consistent winds blowing through the tropics, between 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north latitudes. At about 11 to 14 miles, 18 to 22 kilometers, per hour, sometimes for days on end. In the northern hemisphere they blow toward the equator from the northeast. And south of the equator they blow in from the southeast. While the term trade winds leads most people to think they got their names from the days when large sailing ships depended on them for shipping routes. The word trade actually has a German origin and means track or path. When were the phenomenon of trade winds first explained, and by whom? Astronomer Edmund Halley 1656 to 1742, who is usually thought of as the discoverer of the comet that bears his name, was also interested in cartography, oceanography, and the atmosphere. For instance, 
he created title charts and maps illustrating the path of ecliptic shadows. In 1868, he formed a theory to explain why we have the trade winds. Halley correctly guessed that it had to do with warm tropical air. Mixing with cooler air from more northern and southern latitudes. His idea, though, did not adequately explain why the winds blow from east to west. Rather than south to north, as his theory would have indicated. It took English meteorologist George Hadley's, 1685 to 1768. Discovery of convection cells to amend the ori correctly in 1735. When were the phenomenon of trade winds first explained, and by whom? Astronomer Edmund Halley, 1656 to 1742, who is usually thought of as the discoverer of the comet that bears his name, was also interested in cartography, oceanography, and the atmosphere. For instance, he created tidal charts and maps illustrating the path of ecliptic shadows. In 1868, he formed a theory to explain why we have the trade winds. Halley correctly guessed that it had to do with warm tropical air. Mixing with cooler air from more northern and southern latitudes. His idea, though, did not adequately explain why the winds blow from east to west. Rather than south to north, as his theory would have indicated. It took English meteorologist George Hadley's, 1685 to 1768. Discovery of convection cells to amend the ori correctly in 1735. What are Aeolian sounds? The somewhat musical, sometimes mournful sound wind makes when blowing across branches, wires, or circular objects is called an Aeolian sound. Aeolus was the Greek god of wind. An Aeolian is a musical term used to refer to wind instruments or to a diatonic scale. What are Aeolian sounds? The somewhat musical, sometimes mournful sound wind makes when blowing across branches, wires, or circular objects is called an Aeolian sound. Aeolus was the Greek god of wind. An Aeolian is a musical term used to refer to wind instruments or to a diatonic scale. What is an ionospheric storm? When a coronal mass ejection, solar flare, occurs on the sun's surface. It can dramatically increase the amount of photoionization in the ionosphere. An overwhelming amount of free electrons in the upper atmosphere results. And this can cause problems with radio communications.
What are solstices and when do they occur? A solstice is a time of the year when Earth is pointed either the closest toward the sun or the farthest away from it. On the summer solstice, there are more minutes of daylight than there are on any other day of the year. On the winter solstice, there are fewer minutes of daylight than there are on any other day of the year. In the northern hemisphere, the summer solstice occurs around June 21st of each year. When the North Pole is pointed closest toward the Sun, and the winter solstice occurs around December 21st of each year. When the North Pole is pointed farthest away from the Sun. What are Aeolian sounds? The somewhat musical, sometimes mournful sound wind makes when blowing across branches, wires, or circular objects is called an Aeolian sound. Aeolus was the Greek god of wind. An Aeolian is a musical term used to refer to wind instruments or to a diatonic scale. What mineral were scientists surprised to see in high quantities in the stratosphere? Scientists discovered a higher than expected amount of salt in the mesosphere within the stratosphere. The current theory is that the salt has been left behind by meteor activity. The tropopause is the layer between the troposphere and the stratosphere that hovers around 10 miles. 16 kilometers, above the ground. Within the tropopause is the tropopause break. A region through which water vapor and air can easily pass from the troposphere to the stratosphere. When a weatherman says that the wind direction is westerly does that mean? The wind is coming from the west or that it is blowing towards the west. Wind directions expressed by meteorologists and the National Weather Service indicate which direction the wind is coming from rather than where it is blowing so. If an area is experiencing northwest winds, for example, it means that the wind is coming from the northwest and blowing toward the southeast. In other words, high pressure zones contain more densely packed molecules of various gases which tend to flow to areas where the air is less dense. This concept was first explained by the Greek philosopher Anaximander. C610b.c.ec 546 BCE, who explained that wind was a natural phenomenon and not caused by the gods or by trees waving their leaves, as some people thought. Why are radio transmissions weaker at night than during the day? At night, of course, much less light is entering the atmosphere. 
which means that less ionization is occurring and fewer electrons are available for radio waves to bounce off of. The result is that radio transmissions are weaker. What is the tropopause? He learned that, after about 7 miles, 11 kilometers. The air stopped becoming cooler and leveled off for as high as the balloons could go. He concluded that the atmosphere was divided into two layers. Which he named the troposphere and the stratosphere. Later, in the 1920s, Meteorologists Gordon Miller Born Dobson, 1889-1976, and F. A. Lindemann. First Viscount Charwell, 1886-1957, used studies of meteor trails to learn that temperatures warmed in the atmosphere as high as 30 miles, 48 kilometers, up. Dobson concluded that ultraviolet radiation absorbed by the ozone in the stratosphere was the reason for the warmer air. Why is there an ozone hole at the South Pole but there isn't one at the North Pole? The harmful chemicals that destroy the ozone layer have to be carried up into the stratosphere by clouds in order to react with ozone. The land mass at the South Pole, Antarctica, creates the necessary weather conditions for this to happen. While the North Pole is covered in water, causing winds in the upper atmosphere to blow away pollutants. The bad news is that some scientists fear that increasing levels of pollution may result in a hole in the ozone at the North Pole in about 20 years. What is animophobia? A fear of the wind and sometimes even mere drafts is known as animophobia. Do large-scale weather patterns lead to season trends? Generally, no. One might believe, for example, that a milder than normal winter might be followed by a warmer than usual spring and summer. Actually, meteorologists have found no such reliable patterns. In fact, many times a warm winter is followed by a cold spring, or vice versa. A good example of this is the winter of 1994 to 1995. In the northern United States that season, there was a lot less snow and ice, and urban areas such as Minneapolis St. Paul, Minnesota, saved lots of money on road salt. However, the following spring was decidedly colder and Minnesotans saw ice-covered lakes and ponds well into the month of May. Looking back farther in history, the Dust Bowl years of the 1930s saw severe extremes. With the United States experiencing many of its all-time record lows and highs in 1933, 1934, 1936, and 1937.
How high up does the atmosphere reach? The end of the atmosphere is not like the horizon. Where you can definitely say, this is where the earth ends and the atmosphere begins. Rather, as one travels higher and higher, the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner. One can say, for practical purposes, that the upper atmosphere begins to be indistinguishable from outer space at about 435 miles, 700 kilometers altitude, but that is really just a random place to draw the borderline. The density of the atmosphere is getting very thin indeed at an elevation of 370 miles. About 600 kilometers. At this height, there are about 6 miles, 10 kilometers. Between each molecule, this gap is known as the mean free path. The air pressure here is, effectively, zero. How big is the hole in the ozone? In 2007 the ozone hole was measured to be 9.3 million square miles, 24 million square kilometers, in size. But this was a smaller hole than the record, set in September 2006, when the ozone hole was a gaping 10.6 million square miles, 27.5 million square kilometers, in area. What are Lee troughs and Lee depressions? A Lee trough also known as a dynamic trough is a low pressure zone that forms downwind from a north-south mountain range. A Lee depression is essentially the same thing, except that troughs are long and stretched out. While depressions are well-defined, localized areas of low pressure. What is a January thaw? Mostly seen in the northeastern United States and in the United Kingdom. A January thaw is a brief midwinter period usually late in the month in which temperatures moderate somewhat. The Midwest can also experience such thaws, occasionally with startling changes in temperature. For example, in January 1992, northwestern Iowa had a January thaw in which temperatures rose from minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Minus 51 degrees Celsius, to above freezing in just two weeks. While the change was a welcome one for many people. The thaw sadly melted the giant ice palace sculpture that had been on display for the St. Paul Winter Carnival. What are the dog days of summer? The dog days of summer comprise a period of extremely hot, humid and sultry weather that traditionally occurs in the northern hemisphere in July and August. Traditionally, the days run from July 3rd through August 11th. 
The term comes from the dog star, Sirius, in the constellation Canis Major. At this time of year, Sirius, the brightest visible star in the sky, rises in the east at the same time as the sun. Ancient Egyptians believed that the heat of this brilliant star added to the sun's heat to create hotter weather. Sirius was blamed for everything from the withering droughts to sickness to the discomfort that occurred during this time. What is Bayes Ballot's Law? Dutch meteorologist and chemist Christoph Hendrik died Eric Bayes Ballot. 1817-1890, was a pioneer in meteorology, especially when it came to explaining how air flows in large weather systems. The law that bears his name refers to the fact that when you stand with your back to the wind, the air pressure will be lower on your left than on your right in the northern hemisphere. And the opposite is true if you are standing in the southern hemisphere. This phenomenon which actually only proves to be true during well-organized weather. Systems was also discovered by American climatologist William Farrell, 1817-1891. Farrell actually formulated this theory a few months before Bayes Ballot. The Dutchman graciously acknowledged that the credit deserved to go to Farrell. But the law had already been denoted by his ballot's law, and the name stuck. Trade winds are very consistent winds blowing through the tropics, between 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north latitudes. At about 11 to 14 miles, 18 to 22 kilometers, per hour, sometimes for days on end. In the northern hemisphere they blow toward the equator from the northeast. And south of the equator they blow in from the southeast. While the term trade winds leads most people to think they got their names from the days when large sailing ships depended on them for shipping routes. The word trade actually has a German origin and means track or path. Can the ozone hole be healed? Yes. While the latest figures represent an increase in the ozone hole size over previous years. There is some good news, compared to the 1980s, the hole is expanding more slowly. If we continue to reduce pollutants, the expansion may eventually stop and be reversed. Scientists believe that, if this happens, it will take about 50 years for ozone levels to return to natural levels. When were the phenomenon of trade winds first explained, and by whom? Astronomer Edmund Halley, 1656 to 1742, who is usually thought of as the discoverer of the comet that bears his name, was also interested in cartography, oceanography, and the atmosphere. For instance, he created tidal charts and maps illustrating the path of ecliptic shadows. In 1868, 
he formed a theory to explain why we have the trade winds. Halley correctly guessed that it had to do with warm tropical air. Mixing with cooler air from more northern and southern latitudes. His idea, though, did not adequately explain why the winds blow from east to west. Rather than south to north, as his theory would have indicated. It took English meteorologist George Hadley's, 1685 to 1768. Discovery of convection cells to amend the theory correctly in 1735. How many layers does the Earth's atmosphere contain? The atmosphere, or skin of gas that surrounds the Earth, consists of six layers that are differentiated by temperature, one the troposphere is the lowest level. It averages about 7 miles, 11 kilometers, in thickness, varying from 5 miles. 8 kilometers, at the poles to 10 miles, 16 kilometers, at the equator. Most clouds and weather form in this layer. Temperature decreases with altitude in the troposphere. To the stratosphere ranges between 7 and 30 miles, 11 and 48 kilometers, above Earth's surface. The ozone layer, which is important because it absorbs most of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation, is located in this band. Temperatures rise slightly with altitude to a maximum of about 32 degrees Fahrenheit 0 degrees Celsius. 3. The mesosphere, above the stratosphere, extends from 30 to 55 miles, 48 to 85 kilometers, above the Earth. Temperatures here decrease with altitude to minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit minus 90 degrees Celsius. For the thermosphere, also known as the heteriosphere, is between 55 to 435 miles, 85 to 700 kilometers, above Earth's surface. Temperatures in this layer range to 2,696 degrees Fahrenheit 1,475 degrees Celsius. 5. The ionosphere is a region of the atmosphere that overlaps the others. Reaching from 40 to 250 miles, 65 to 400 kilometers. In this region, the air becomes ionized, electrified, from the sun's ultraviolet rays. It is divided into three subregions, one, the D region, 40 to 55 miles 65 to 90 kilometers. Two, the E region, also called the Kennelly Heaviside layer, at 56 to 93 miles. 90 to 150 kilometers, and 3, the F region, 93 to 248 miles 150 to 400 kilometers, which is further separated into the F1 layer and the F2 layer, also called the Appleton layer, with the dividing line being at about 150 miles, 240 kilometers, above sea level. 6. The exosphere lies above the thermosphere and includes everything above 435 miles, 700 kilometers, high. In this layer, temperature no longer has any meaning.
What are Halcyon Days? This term is often used to refer to a time of peace or prosperity. Among sailors, it is the two-week period of calm weather before and after the shortest day of the year. Approximately December 21st. The phrase is taken from Halcyon. The name the ancient Greeks gave to the kingfisher. According to legend, the Halcyon built its nest on the surface of the ocean and was able to quiet the winds while its eggs were hatching. What is the mesosphere? The mesosphere is the uppermost layer of the stratosphere. Below the mesosphere, at altitudes of 25 to 40 miles, 40 to 65 kilometers, is a warm layer of the stratosphere that contains a high concentration of ozone molecules that block ultraviolet light. What does it mean when we say something is on the lee side of the wind? If a person is standing on the lee side of something, say, a building or rocky prominence, then he or she is protected from the wind because that obstacle is between him or her and the oncoming wind. What is a barograph? Resembling a seismograph, a barograph records changes in air pressure over time. A recording arm with a pen on one end moves side to side. Drawing a line over a paper or foil chart that moves over a rotating barrel. Who figured out that temperatures rise in the stratosphere? Pioneering French meteorologist Leon Philippe Tisserin de Bord, 1855 to 1913, conducted an experiment using helium balloons and temperature sensors. What is the ozone layer? The ozone layer is part of the stratosphere, a layer of the Earth's atmosphere that lies about 10 to 30 miles. 16 to 48 kilometers, above the surface of the Earth. Ozone, O3 is like regular gaseous oxygen, O2, with an extra oxygen atom attached to it. It is created when short wavelength ultraviolet radiation interacts with O2 molecules. The energy from the radiation breaks the molecules apart, which then recombine into ozone. The ozone layer is important because it protects life on Earth from harmful ultraviolet radiation. While it does not absorb all of this radiation, otherwise, it would be impossible for you to get a 10. It prevents about 80% of it from reaching life on Earth. As anyone who knows about melanoma can tell you, too much ultraviolet radiation can lead to cancer. 
Before the ozone layer was discovered, someone must have discovered ozone. How is the troposphere defined? The troposphere is considered as the layer closest to Earth and is also the region where temperatures reliably decrease with altitude. The troposphere is thickest at the Earth's equator, reaching heights of about 11 miles. 17 to 18 kilometers, and this is, therefore, also where you will find the coldest tropospheric temperatures. It might seem rather ironic that, right above the world's steamiest tropical forests, temperatures can be as low as minus 110 degrees Fahrenheit minus 79 degrees Celsius. How did Earth's atmosphere form? Some of Earth's atmosphere was probably gas captured from the solar nebula four and a half billion years ago, when our planet was forming. It is thought that most of Earth's atmosphere was trapped beneath Earth's surface. Escaping through volcanic eruptions and other crustal cracks and fissures. Water vapor was the most plentiful gas to spew out. And it condensed to form the oceans, lakes, and other surface water. Carbon dioxide was probably the next most plentiful gas. And much of it dissolved in the water or combined chemically with rocks on the surface. Nitrogen came out in smaller amounts, but did not undergo significant condensation or chemical reactions. This is why scientists think it is the most abundant gas in our atmosphere. The high concentration of oxygen in our atmosphere is very unusual for planets. Because oxygen is highly reactive and combines easily with other elements. In order to maintain oxygen in gaseous form, it must constantly be replenished. What are equinoxes and when do they happen? An equinox is a time of the year when, in the course of Earth's orbit, our planet is at a location where the equatorial plane and the ecliptic plane intersect. In other words, the tilt of Earth's axis is pointed perpendicular to the line between Earth and the Sun at. An equinox Earth's poles are tilted neither toward nor away from the Sun, but tilted off to the side. On the day of an equinox, there are as many minutes of daylight as there are of night hence the term equinox, meaning equal darkness. In the northern hemisphere, the vernal, spring, equinox occurs around March 21st of each year. And the autumnal, fall, equinox occurs around September 21st.